In programming, you often have to work with lists of things, lists of integers or strings or some other type of object. The most common way of storing a list is in an array. An array is just a sequential collection of items that start at the beginning and end at the end. And typically, an array is indexed from zero. That's not the case necessarily in all languages, but often an array starts with the first item being at index zero and the last item is the length of the array minus one. So, if you have five items, the first item is at index zero, the last item is at the index given by the length, that's five of the array, minus one. So, that's zero, one, two, three, four. Let's look at that by looking at some actual programming code to see how arrays are really used. The syntax for declaring and using arrays varies, of course, from one programming language to another, but often arrays are declared and indexed using square brackets. Here's an example in Object Pascal. This is in the Delphi programming environment. And you can see I've declared an array. And here the syntax uses a range. It says an array of from zero index to index three of string. This array is typed so it can only hold string data types. In fact, Object Pascal would also allow me to array from a different index. So here I've got an array from 1 to 4. Many programming languages typically index from array 0. That's the first element. And so here I'll use that syntax. I've put these strings, these four strings, into the slots of the array at index 0, 1, 2, and 3. So it's a four-element array, uh, but the indexes are 0, 1, 2, and 3. Pascal, as with many other languages, uses typed arrays. So I can only put strings into this array. I can't put integers or other data types. Let's have a look at Ruby. Ruby is a bit more free and easy in what it allows me to do and what it allows me to store an array. Here I've got two arrays. So the first array just has an array of uh, integers, one, two, three, four, five. The second array, A1, is a mixed array. It has an integer, a string, and then a floating point number. And so the two statements at the end, PA0 and PA1, uh, just print out, display the contents of the array. So let me run it. And you can see that's, as expected, exactly what I've put in the array is printed out. Now let's look at what I can do with these arrays. Let's index into the A1 array at position 1, at index 1 see what is printed. Well, index 1, that's the array is indexed from 0, so at index 0 is the integer 1, at index 1 is the string 2. Now let me actually change the contents. I can index into the array at position 1 and assign something different to it. So I'm going to put in, let's put three x's, four x's, so it's clear as to what's gone into that position. Now I again display the contents of the slot 1. So I'm indexing into slot 1 of array A1 and printing out the contents. I've indexed previously and changed the contents. It was the string 2. Now I've put in four x's. And when I display the results, there's my new contents of that position at index 1. It's the four x's I put in. So that's a quick overview of how you can use arrays. As I say, the syntax varies from one language to another, and some languages require them to be typed to a specific data type. Other languages, like Ruby, allow you to mix different data types at different slots, at different indexes in the array. But in essence, that is how arrays work. They are sequential lists of items which can be indexed. Learn programming and the business of programming at www.bitwisecourses.com.